Good afternoon. My name is Edward Nwakadi, and I'm the founder and CEO of Red Swan CRE. And uh, really happy to be here. So I want to thank um, the FCO Summit for inviting me for the second time in the year. Uh, but today, I just want to briefly talk about a few things that have not been discussed. You know, we've talked a lot about technology and the, the uses of technology, but we have talked a little bit about the why part of it and why this is all important. And so I think that, you know, entrepreneurs like myself, you know, have to have a passion for a purpose of what we want to bring to the public. And we're always striving, you know, for excellence and greatness in, in achieving that objective. And so, you know, what we are doing is really forging an opportunity uh, for achieving greatness in adoption of, of digital technology and democratization of uh, access as well as uh, financial wealth management through technology and tokenization. Just give you an example, my, my family is from Nigeria and I've gone there several times and you can see uh, Nigeria is a thriving country with almost 280 people, but you can see a difference between uh, the type of development there and the type of development you would have here in, in uh, Seoul and it's really about access to capital and so one of the things that drives me uh, with Red Swan is to be able to provide this access to capital for communities around the world who actually will have benefit from it so it can change their lives. And this is what uh, is really pushing the foundation of our company. I'm just gonna throw this disclaimer slide right here just so that you uh, can see that we're not offering any type of investment advice. Yeah, I talked about the passion and the leveraging of our technology. I really believe that uh, with our platform, we're growing on a regular basis. We're, every day we're uh, learning new applications to our business. We're meeting new customers that we can service. We're understanding new problems that we can solve. And that's really making a major impact on the world. Uh, and I'll show you the different places that we are operating right now so you can see what, exactly what I'm talking about. First of all, I wanna talk about uh, digital access. Um, Digital is 10 times better than analog. And so when you start looking at the rapid changes that we're seeing over the years in terms of digital, you'll understand that consumers are really driving this because they want rapid uh, access, they want uh, efficiency, uh, they want convenience. And this is driving us all to create technology that, that's gonna feed into that. And there's a reason for why, but you'll see that the, the democratization of even our democracy and our demographics are changing rapidly. So I believe that technology is, is a conduit for change and we're really excited about what we're doing here at Red Swan. <clears throat> this is a slide to show you the real opportunity uh, that we look forward to. In the United States and possibly the same here in Korea and also in Japan, that there is a, a change in wealth, a transition of wealth has taken place um, where you're seeing about $156 trillion of investment assets in the U.S. is being transitioned over uh, to and inherited by uh, the baby, from the baby boomers uh, to the millennials. And just the millennials themselves, that's $85 trillion worth of value trans transferring over in the next 10 years. We see this as a major opportunity. Uh, one, because we're focusing on real estate, and you can see that 42% of that value is real estate. Um, and we have to learn how to communicate and how to address these changes. And anytime you have movement of activity, there's always gonna be servicing of that movement. There's always gonna be um, a way to decentralize that activity. And I see this as an opportunity for uh, the young who are millennials to learn more about wealth management, but also uh, for those who don't have uh, a lot of real estate assets to be able to take part in this you know, significant opportunity. What is this all about? Well, 90% um, of all the wealth in the world, all the millionaires, all the billionaires, all have a strong foundation in real estate. Real estate has been uh, the best investment vehicle for centuries because of the fact that it um, grows in value. So you have asset accumulation of capital gains. It pays out dividends. Uh, it actually you know, generates income that pays down uh, mortgage debt to build your equity. And so this is why you see all the wealth in the world focused on real estate. 
And the question is, how much real estate um, do we own, do you own, and how to get access to that real estate so that you can have some financial freedom in your lives. We think technology uh, is helping to uh, enhance that effort, and Red Swan is, is uh, really much behind that effort as well. The problem has been uh, the basic things you probably are familiar with, but uh, illiquidity, uh, being able to get out of real estate is one reason why some people don't enter it in the first place. Because if you have to put money into something and you don't know exactly when you're going to get your money out of it, some people are going to be conservative and not do it. If you look at you know, Japan, for example, I learned that uh, most of their money is in savings accounts. They don't have stocks. They don't have real estate. They don't have bonds. 60% you know, of their savings is in savings accounts. That's where most of the wealth is. And so now when you're seeing the devaluation of the currency in that market and the interest rates starting to go up, they realize that they're, you know, just having a savings account, you're not adding value to your wealth. You're actually starting to lose value with wealth. So illiquidity is one big asset. But I think the largest uh, issue for real estate is access to quality real estate. Access to buy into a building like the one we're sitting in right now usually doesn't come down to a certain level of income holders. It's usually for the major corporations. If you look at the buildings around your town, you see big brand names on all the buildings because they have the access and the smaller people don't get access. We want to change that with tokenization by providing uh, access to all types of real estate. And so when you look at this slide, it shows you how tokenization uh, democratizes a piece of real estate by allowing you to have fractional ownership of any uh, underlining asset. But in our case, we look at real estate uh, properties. So be able to buy into a fractional uh, piece of real estate and actually know that it's been posted and articulated on the blockchain, which is innumerable, immutable on uh, the blockchain, which means that you know that you own it, you can hold it in your own digital wallet, and you can transfer it um, and sell it or buy it uh, at your will, which is something that has never been available for consumers in the past, only been available uh, for major institutions who are into REITs and, organ and, and entities like that. So we see this as a, as a major uh, movement for democratization uh, that especially the younger generations are going to really inherit as they grow into uh, their wealth. These are benefits, again, liquidity 24-7, um, diversification, you know, having access to buy properties around the world uh, is, is important because if you're only buying assets in your location, like, for example, in Malaysia or in, um, in Kenya, uh, the government mandates that the pensions only buy assets within the, the government of Kenya and only uh, invest in T-bonds from Kenya if the take Kenya's currency starts to de devalue, then that pension fund, your pension money, starts to devalue as well. So global diversification is very important, and so we make sure as a practice that we're putting global opportunities on our platform so you have multiple opportunities to take a look at. So put it simply, what is Wentz Bond? We are a, a marketplace of security tokens, uh, digitized real estate, um, we're in the securities business, so we actually understand that we're selling securities. Um, it's very clear in terms of the format uh, with the United States that uh, they've given us a license in order to sell securities. And we knew day one that the proper way to get into this business, if we're going to be uh, issuing assets that are actually securitized, that you have to have a license. And that's the first thing that we set for to do is to generate a license. But, you know, the elephant in the room for most conversations is... What is the difference between security tokens and crypto? Almost every 90% of the people I talk to that I visit for the first time is always confusing that fact. I know you guys are probably don't have a problem since you're here at the STO conference, but that is a big question that many people suffer with is the distinction between securities and cryptocurrency. And I'm showing you here, there's a major distinction that anytime you're selling any kind of investment vehicle uh, where the idea is to make a yield from it, um, it's a security. Uh, the Howey test is, you know, gives you more definition. And so uh, we knew that's what we were doing, and so getting a security broker deal license uh, was paramount to our success. The licenses we have are two basic licenses. One is a uh, RIA, Registered Investment Advisor License. This allows us to communicate 
uh, opportunities and describe the opportunity to investors so that you kind of get an idea of what you're buying into and give you advice to that record. And we have experienced brokers on our team that can help you with that. But the other license is our broker-dealer entity license, which is a platform. And this allows us to actually trade and hire broker-dealers, interact with broker-dealers around the world, uh, create securities, whether they be debt instruments or equity instruments, and disseminate those uh, security assets to customers around the world. These are the types of securities that we can uh, issue and sell. Uh, we choose to focus on uh, two types of securities. One is on the equity side, uh, which gives you ownership of the equity in a property, meaning that if that property uh, is getting dividends, it distributes dividends, you get a pro rata share of those dividends. Uh, the other is on the, ec on the debt side, so that if you now have a bank note or a loan against the asset and you want to monetize or democratize that loan and let many people have a piece of that loan instrument, uh, then we would actually fractionalize uh, the mortgages as well. So what we do is pretty easy. Um, we basically take data on both sides of, of a marketplace. We have the properties on one side, so all the performance on the property in terms of the value, the depreciation, all that is, is, is uh, put together and put on our platform so we can pass that on to investors. And on the other side, uh, we have what we call customer suitability, where we question our customers on, on, over and over again. That's actually a requirement by the SEC that you know your customer very well. And this uh, allows us to understand the data behind our customers in terms of what they want, what their capabilities are, what they currently own, uh, the transactions they've done. Uh, and then our platform will actually connect the dots to make sure that you're getting the type of investment vehicles you're looking for uh, and nothing more. We're actually starting to implement AI on both sides of the equation. We're starting with you know, an FAQ so that anybody who comes to the website has a question. Uh, we have future, uh, frequently asked questions that the AI bot would actually give you responses to. But the customer suitability part is even more important because it actually uses AI to interview the customer, just like you're going to, uh, you have an iPhone and you're trying to sign on your iPhone for the very first time, it walks you through these questions. That's what we're doing for our site so that the AI will have to walk through all the customer questions, but also be able to read and come back and ask the customer for any updated information. That's very important for the business and we'll be doing the same thing on the seller side as well to generate more data on the properties because this data actually helps us make better decisions on behalf of our customers. Real estate is a huge market. Um, you can see here that, uh, and we're just focusing on income producing real estate. We call that commercial real estate. Anything that produces income, that's whether it be dirt or building like this size, we call it commercial real estate. So all around the world, the Class A and Class B assets is roughly 80, 20, so $75 trillion in value. But I think the core area to focus on is this center, $26 trillion. That represents locked equity in properties. And you ask what that is. That means that most owners buy a property and they have a debt on it. And as they keep paying down the debt, their equity is building, building and building. And so that represents basically um, trapped equity that they cannot get out of the property unless they sell the property. So in the United States and maybe here, some people are what we call merchant builders. They build, they stabilize the asset, and they sell it within a three-year period because they want to get their liquidity out to pay back their, their investors. But then they have to turn around and buy another property with the profits they have. If you're able to pull the equity out of these properties, uh, the GP or the issuer can continue to manage the property uh, and be able to still generate profit from the upside of the asset um, while the investors are still getting their guaranteed return, uh, which I think is uh, what we're here for. We're here to convert these unlocked properties, which is what we call a, a lack of opportunity cost, and allow these, these issuers to have more equity out of their properties to go buy more properties. So it's a smart way uh, for owners to do business uh, that own buildings but it's also a win-win opportunity for the in investors as well. Basically, is how we do it. Uh, it's a pretty simple process, uh, but uh, you know, the bottom line is, at the end of the day, once we go ahead and tokenize an asset and the owner now has pulled their equity out, every year uh, they're promising a preferred return to their customer. 
Uh, that could be an 8%, 2%, whatever the agreement is, the preferred return. Once they hit that hurdle rate of a preferred return and they start to increase the return because let's say that uh, rents are going up, that difference, uh, whether it be 4% or 10% difference the next year, they get to split that difference between the investor as well as the, the LP uh, or GP sponsor. It was just, and I consider that to be a win-win situation because now the GP has very little equity in their property, but they're able to now benefit from the increase of cash flow from the property year after year. The process for onboarding is uh, currently, I think, pretty simple. These are the basic steps. You do your KYC, you select the asset that you're looking for, um, you now put, post your capital, uh, then once you purchase the, your uh, security token, the token is transferred to your wallet. So this is a pretty simple step for us, simple process. But it's been a very positive experience so far. Uh, we've been able to put ourselves in three different uh, regions around the world. As you can see that we are in the United States, uh, we're also in the GCC, and we're also in the continent of Africa. We're focused on three different countries in Africa, which is Nigeria, Ghana, and Kenya. I'll tell you a little bit more about those right now. Um, we realize that investors, uh, especially smaller investors, have a hard time understanding uh, how to analyze investments. And so we have you know, 50 to 100 different opportunities on our website. It may take them days, months, or years to go through analyzing all the assets to figure out which assets to invest in. So we started to put together funds, uh, which you know, consolidate the assets together uh, which actually diversifies the investment and allows the investor to buy into a fund uh, that achieves their, their financial objectives. But because it's diversified, it greatly reduces your risk. And then you can also take another step forward and diversify between uh, global countries. And so now you're getting global diversification as well as uh, country-specific uh, diversification. Um, so this is what we're seeing. These are projects that we have. The, the first of all is the growth fund from the GCC. Um, is existing right now, I'll show you that a little bit, but we're doing the same thing in, uh, in Africa. We're focusing on student housing and affordable housing because these are projects that have high, high demand, which we see will generate in very strong profits for our investors. These are some pictures of the uh, projects in GCC, but I'm gonna actually show you a video right now that hopefully will play. It'll show you a little bit about the, the portfolio we have in GCC. 20% of the portfolio is made up of land sites that are going to be developed. That's going to add to the value once they're finished. But uh, there's a lot of stabilized assets, as you can see right here. Uh, thousands of units of multifamily. This is housing for expats. Um, we also have office buildings, as you see right here. Retail centers, mega plazas. This is all real estate that we've tokenized and now offering to individuals. This right here is industrial. We have uh, a farm that grows alfalfa on 188 acres on the desert that feeds livestock. And then we also have a, a fish farm that produces 20 million pounds of fish per quarter, and that feeds the GCC region, uh, which is a very profitable uh, inter not enterprise by itself. So these are assets that the client has in some of the core locations and they're building more properties. You can see that pad site right there next to the tower. Uh, another tower is gonna go up. And when that tower goes up and stabilizes, that actually adds more value to the, to the revenue and to the profits. So we call this the GCC One portfolio. And as time goes on, we'll be adding more properties in the GCC uh, to this portfolio, make it easier for our, our customers. Uh, our CTO, Dr. Don Apara, uh, has come up with additional types of technology that we're going to implement into our platform that we feel is going to enhance uh, the services to our customer. And so the first of those is we're looking at uh, an ATS, so alternative trading system. Uh, this allows for our customers to have their immediate uh, liquidity options, opportunities on our site. Right now, we are basically working with other ATSs for liquidity, but we plan to have our own. Uh, this should be done by the end of, uh, or the middle of next year. Um, but also, we're moving to a mobile app environment because we realize that uh, countries around the world are more focused with mobile apps. The generation that we're going after, which is millennials we talked about, 
are more comfortable with mobile apps as well. So we're putting everything from the web, app, web, web platform to a mobile platform. And then finally, uh, there's been a very strong interest in ESG. And so we're working with customers who are going to be tokenizing mangroves and things like that in order to uh, reduce carbon uh, that's going on around the world. So these are things that we're focusing on and that will probably be taking place in the next 12 months. Also, we see DeFi as being a natural fit for real estate. Um, when you talk about DeFi, you're really talking about lending. And what better asset class to lend on on a blockchain than, than real estate because it's already generating income uh, and is also low risk. Whereas right now, people are doing DeFi on cryptocurrency. Well, if cryptocurrency is not that stable. It's a very volatile vehicle, so you can have a lot of risk doing DeFi on cryptocurrency. But de using DeFi applications on real estate uh, makes a lot of sense. So that's another where we're direct uh, headed. Also, um, tokenizing security platforms and enhancing the, this is, these are uh, other areas that we're looking at. And Don will be able to give you more information on that. Uh, we're really trying to increase our distribution uh, with you know almost eight billion dollars worth of assets being tokenized. That's a lot of assets to distribute. And one of the fastest ways for us to do that is to start building a network of distribution. Uh, so we're going after licensed brokers in different parts of the world. Uh, we've been to Japan. We're coming to Korea. We're going to Africa. We're going to Canada. Everywhere we go, and we're recruiting broker-dealers who are licensed because uh, many of them know that this is coming, this, this new uh, type of business is coming to them, and they want to get involved so they don't miss out on the opportunity. So we're offering a platform for broker-dealers so that when they issue um, or bring their customers for our platform, uh, they're able to register the customer, get a control number. We know that they brought the customer to the platform, and as that customer buys securities, uh, they get compensation. So it's a great way to earn additional income to your book of business if you're already a licensed practitioner. We can only work with licensed practitioners in these markets, but we do have a, a program where we actually sponsoring licensor. So if you're trying to get licensed in your own market and you need to make somebody sponsor you with, with the capital, uh, Red Swan is doing that so we can increase our base of broker dealers around the world. So the other way to do business uh, which doesn't need a license is folks who are bringing us you know, real estate opportunities. Uh, we like large projects that are you know, $20 million and above. And as you bring those projects to us, those as issuers, and we tokenize our projects, we actually pay compensation for uh, that type of referral. So um, things are going extremely well. We're growing. Um, we think this is uh, definitely the phase of the future. Uh, there's no question that it's going to happen. It's pretty inevitable that uh, security tokens will continue to proliferate uh, the world. And we're just trying to make sure that we wake people up to get involved. Um, so with that, I want to say thank you. And hopefully, I gave you some good education about security token and real live adoption. <laughs>